What's up guys, Chris here again with another Four Nights of the Apocalypse manga chapter review. And I have to say, this was another very interesting chapter. Back to back interesting chapters that continue to pile on the fact that this will most likely be the arc where we get Sin's true identity revealed. And if you haven't been following me uh, as of recently, I really hope that Sin is actually Lancelot, the son of Bon Elaine, as there are a lot of things that do play into uh, Sin being Lancelot, and it just makes a whole lot of sense. But, but yeah, that's really all I really need to say in the subject. This chapter was really good, setting up potential new threats, and this current arc, which is most likely is definitely an arc, is really setting a lot of things up, and even alluding to what could potentially be happening right now between Leonis and Camelot specifically. But before we get into this actual chapter, don't forget to like and subscribe and hit the notification bell for updates on future videos. It really helps. These Four Nights of the Apocalypse videos are doing very well, though as of recently, not all of them are doing as insanely well as they normally would. But that's all just here and there. They're still doing very good. They're still the most popular series of videos that I am continuously doing on this channel. So I really love and appreciate you guys for making this, st this stuff possible. And I will continue to give you Four Nights of the Apocalypse content as we move on. Also, don't forget to check out my Patreon account where you can help fund these videos, donate to the channel so I can get more videos out that aren't just my chapter reviews. That way you guys can see a bit more of me and my thoughts on all things anime and manga. And the tiers, the tiers and rewards are pretty good, especially for someone who is yet to reach a thousand subscribers, which we are over the 800 subscriber mark. So just 200 more and we'll reach that sweet, sweet 1k. So... Please, please subscribe to the channel and recommend this this channel to all, all your friends. Also, I also have a coffee account as well. If you want to, if you want to donate to the channel as well, without the added benefit of Patreon, if you just want to directly see me make these videos as quickly as possible, coffee also helps as well. But without further ado, let's get right into the chapter. Chapter thirty three: The Evil Feast. And this takes place directly after last chapter where the whole gang were climbing up one of the peaks of the, of the, of the mountain range in order to reach Leonis. And over one of those mountain ranges, they notice a village in the corner beyond a bunch of trees. Percival and Donnie rush towards them as they believe the town will have food and stuff there and just all around good times. Sin ends up going in to try and stop them and pull them back as one of the mountain, as a mountain man comes out and tries to tell them not to go near that village saying that they're all it's a den of monsters and the chapter ends ominous honestly with the villagers see, looking very monstrous and demonic in nature and that's where this chapter picks off percival and donnie look in and we wave hello to all the villagers who are grinning and smiling at them so happily percival introduces himself and states that they're going off to leonis and you can tell just by the way these villagers are drawn and with how their smirks and body language are this is very creepy, so yeah, I can't wait to see the stuff animated, but it also shows just how well, how, should, how do I put this, how Donnie and Percival can't pick up on things directly, and they are kind of trusting people, especially Percival, so this really helps a lot. So Donnie asks the obvious, is there a tavern? Meanwhile, we actually meet the village elder from the looks of it. And you can tell this guy is like monstrous or demonic or something because of the text box. He says that they have that they're able to brew beer and they don't have a tavern. As we do get a full page dedicating us to this creature. I'm saying creature because with how he's designed, he's obviously not human. And that staff he's holding, I, my theory is that that is most likely a staff of chaos. And this might be one of Arthur's knights or maybe a chaos being... That managed to that was created by Arthur with sentient intelligence, and it's just doing stuff on its own. I don't know, but I can't wait to find out. We kept back to Nazian's and and Anne as they're talking to the hunter, who the mountain man. He is actually a hunter, saying that he patrols this area of the mountain range to make sure no travelers go go into that village. And as Nazian is asking why it's called a den, a den of demons, a den of monsters. Even despite how spooky it is, the mountain man, the hunter, states that it really is. It literally is a den of monsters. Stating that there isn't, there was never a village here on the mountain range before, but it just some, somehow appeared 10 or so years ago. 
So this does fit into the time frame between the end of the Seven Deadly Sins and the very start of the series, as overall it's about 16 years. So you have to wonder, wonder when this took place, and if it's 10 years, then it's probably at some point after Tristan and Lancelot are, are in fact born. The hunter continues to say that they look like people, but he's not joking, and he, that he saw with his own eyes. The moment one of those cre one of those people, one of the people left the village, it transformed to some kind of monster. And I'm liking this representation as we're not getting what exactly this thing looks like. It just looks like spooky girl and, and a bit a little grotesque, like a blob or something. But it is very remin very reminiscent of a mo of some type of monster. So. This could further improve the theory that this is a den of chaos creatures with some sort of sentient intelligence. But that's just my theory, and I think anyone reading this chapter will are probably picking up on the hints. And if that is the case, I honestly wouldn't mind it, as chaos is a very prominent role in this sequel series. So if there's more chaos creatures around than we initially thought that aren't completely under Arthur's control, or others just spread out across Britannia, then that would make a lot of sense. The hunter, continues to, the hunter continues to say that any uh, travelers that go near it are never seen again. And and on and Ozians realize this is similar to what Sin told them about these rumors and stories about a village of man-eating ogres. The hunter pleads with them to stay away, but on states that they're going to go in. They're their friends, they're their companions, and he has to let and the hunter has to let them go into the village and to tell them everything he knows. We got back into the village with Donnie being Donnie, getting himself drunk drunk off of, off of ale. And he asks what it is. It tastes very weird, but it still tastes very good. As the village elder states that it's called Under Ale. The villagers modeled it after Britannia's ale. And I'm liking how we keep getting them being super excited about this super friendly village, despite all these panels telling us, the readers, how creepy they all are. And Percival, Percival again, still very pure to this, too pure for this world, as he is just like, they're all smiling. It just makes me want to smile. Also, Donnie's like, it's only you. But then Donnie does pick up on the the very weird thing in the fact that none of the villagers are talking; that they're very quiet. The elder says that they cannot speak the Britannian tongue, and if and if that is going to be a problem. And I like Percival's answer there, stating that uh, they don't need language and that if they can read each other's hearts, they can still be friends. That is a very shonen protagonist and idealistic way to look at things, and that is a very positive message to give to people. You might not be able to speak the same language or come from the same place, but if you can understand each other, you can be friends. I like that message. It's a very nice message, and Percival, being the one to say it, completely in character. I love it. As Donnie is complimenting him, we see that the Elder stares at the Dragon Hilt, the piece of the Coffin of Eternal Darkness that Percival has, which is now his sword. And I like that little menacing look on his face. This further instates that there are a bunch of people out there that will go chase after Percival and everyone as they have huge targets on their backs now that they have this piece of the coffin. But directly afterwards, we see that Sin above one of the one of the above one of the buildings asks the old man who he is and clearly states that he saw the bird backing this bird following them back in camp and deducing that this old man has been using it to follow them as it has followed them back into town and has been circling them so sin asks him to tell him what's going on and the old and basically asks if well if they're after percival or the Coffin of Eternal Darkness, or both, which all those are very, very good uh, reasons to spy on someone, Percival being the member of the Four Nights of the Apocalypse, and the Coffin of Eternal Darkness being, well, the Coffin of Eternal Darkness. Both very real reasons for people, especially those under Arthur's command, to try and take down these people and trap them. Donnie and Percival still taken in by this whole illusion, basically say that Sin has to have fun here, and not to be so mean and to stop worrying. The old man repeats the name Sin a few times, stating Sin the Fox's name, Sin, Sin the Fox, as he laughs, stating, saying that I say, saying that he basically that he noticed something and asks Sin if he would like to talk privately. And Sin, with the very serious and angry look, says, "Sure." He jumps off the building, goes to the ground, and follows the elder. 
as the elder tells every, tells every villager to prepare food for them. We then cut to, Don to Donnie and Percival just filling their faces with a crap ton of food from the villagers, stating that they never ate in cans and that it, this food does taste kind of weird. Again, very specific wording. The, the food and the ale taste very weird in this village. And we're going to get more into that as we go on when Donnie asks for a refill. We see one of the villagers menacingly going through a corner. And we see what looks like a type of weird language that cannot be understood as they communicate to each other. This large man, this large bald man, sharpens his knife, licks it with a long, with a long monstrous tongue. We hear a weird noise. We see something on the table as he then chops something down and blood spurts all over his face. So, I have a, I have a th really quick theory. So, you know how the legend says that they're man-eating ogres? And that it seems that this whole thing is some type of illusion or something? What if what Percival and Donnie are eating is actually human flesh that has been cooked and prepared by these monsters? Okay. Nakaba Suzuki. I get that Halloween is just around the corner. And I know you want this story to be a bit darker. Or as dark as the Seven Daily Sins, if not darker. But, uh, I really hope he's not... I really hope you're not going in the direction where our main lead literally just ate people. I really hope that's not the direction and shock value we're getting into. <sighs> so... Quick tangent away, that is probably very possible that just because it, maybe it's like fake food or something like that, or maybe it's all just an illusion or whatever, and maybe it's all just being everything being misleading. That doesn't change the fact that this very specific set of panels su heavily suggests that these villagers are cutting up and preparing people and baking them into food. And it's all just one big ass illusion. Okay, little rant speculation thing over with, back to the chapter. We cut back to the old man, stating that he's done well to see who he really is. But enough about that, stating that he must be tired after his long journey. Please re rest your weary bones here, as we see Sin unconscious on the ground, as the elder towering over him seems to have lit a fire and then possibly, possibly use some sort of sleeping spell on him to knock him out. Now, I honestly want to go with the fact that maybe Sin is immune to this for all, for all intents and purposes, and maybe he's just playing, or maybe he's just, uh, you know, playing possum so that he can see this guy's true form and whatever. But remember, Sin is a very per perceptive guy. He's he's never truly, uh, you know, spit, uh, tricked. He's always cautious and judgmental of others, and wants to try and figure everything out. He keeps an eye out, and I like that. So I don't think he's been taken out so easily. He's very cautious. So it's very possible that he realized what was going on, and he's faking it. So he can see what exactly this old man is planning. Moving back to Nazians and on, they go over with the hunter, basically what they're going to try and do. As we go over that the whole that there are that there is a protective barrier around this village and that just like what he said when one of the villagers left the village they transformed into a monster this whole thing is keeping an illusion a facade of what's going on inside of what people can see inside or outside the second you go out the illusion is lifted and he even mentions that one of that the older guy the elder was angry at one of the monsters for leaving the town and that the and they go and the only way to actually be able to see who they truly are is to destroy their idol. This giant towering thing in the middle of the, of the town, from what I can see, that if it's destroyed, it most likely will get rid of the entire illusion. Now, this is a very bizarre structure, and it's very uh, very obvious it might have something to do with Arthur's chaos powers, or it could just be some very powerful magical item. Maybe Merlin made it or something. I'm not entirely sure, but it's creating a very powerful and long-range illusion for people inside and outside. So, 
The whole plan is that they break the that they manage to destroy their idol to lift this illusion, and in the ensuing confusion, they save Percival and Donnie and Sin and get the hell out of there. Now the Mountain Man states that he will in fact divert the attention from the outside so that An and Nazien can go in and destroy the idol. But Nazien brings up something interesting about the hunter. His name is Ardo. I uh, I forgot to mention his name was Ardo. Nazian asks why he's exposing himself to danger. Why is he so eager to help them? An notices that Nazian is suspicious, but Nazian says that he didn't really mean to be suspicious as An reassures him, saying that Ardo hasn't stated any lies. And remember, An can tell if someone is lying or hiding something. So if she says that someone is not lying and is actually telling the truth, then you should trust them. So this is a very good thing that a very good person to have on the team. Ardo states that he can't stand seeing people just go in and basically get killed without no, without really being able to do anything, and that this is his chance. On and Nazian stank him, as now they have to save those the three idiots. With On taking command, saying it's time to kick the things off, as we get another ominous panel at the end of the chapter, with Donnie passed out. And Percival yawning after yawning, being tired, most likely getting tired out after eating all that food, which hopefully is not human meat, and is just laced with something to make them tired. As these villagers with their evil-looking grins staring down at them, and that ends the chapter. So another nice Four Nights of the Apocalypse chapter, and again completely alludes to who Sin might actually be, and gives us clues on who this elder might be. Maybe he's a chaos beast, or maybe he's truly some sort of knight of Camelot that is, that is defected and is just doing this because he is cursed or something. Maybe he can't leave the mountain range or something. There's not really much we can tell until we get more information. But all I know is, this arc continues to put heavy emphasis on Sin. This is going to be Sin's arc. His reveal will be a really big reveal, even if it might end up being that he's Lancelot, and it be very obvious. But there's not really much else to talk about this chapter. It's very obvious that Nakaba Suzuki is giving it more of a horror-esque thriller vibe with these new enemies. With the... Uh, oh man. With the implication that these monsters are using the people that they've caught and are preparing food to feed to the people that come in so they can trick and turn into f and kill and turn into food. Again, a very horror-esque vibe from this, and creepy vibe also. I hope that's not the case. It'll be in an interesting twist, but I don't think Nakba Suzuki is going to go that far. This is a shonen series, so, yeah. But with all that said and done, I honestly believe this is another pretty solid chapter. I think last week's was better as it kept alluding to a whole bunch of stuff, especially with Sin. And Sin had the very heavy focus of that chapter. This chapter continues to elude what's going on, and I'm still very convinced that this is going to be the arc where Sin reveals his true identity and true name. So, yeah, I really do believe that this is going to be Sin's actual introduction arc. His... Mm, the arc where he comes into his own as a member of the main cast. But, what did you guys think? Was this a really good chapter? Are you liking the vibe that this arc is providing with us? Do you think that, that once again, do you think once again that Sin is going to get his identity revealed? Let me know in the comments down below with your theories and speculations. And don't forget to like and subscribe to our channel. As always, let's push that 1k subscriber mark. We are really, really close and I want to get there before the end of the year. And with all that said and done, I hope you all have an awesome day.